money, honey. Get the money, honey. Get the money, honey. Get the money, honey. Hey, 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 hey. Give yourself a round of applause. Welcome, 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 welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Christina L. Turner, and you are at Business Talk with Christina L. Turner, Keymaker. And I am here today to talk to you about the difference between branding and marketing because there is a difference. And if you are coming into entrepreneurship, you need to be able to identify. There are a lot of different people out um, in the universe of business where they talk about marketing, they talk about branding, they're, they talk about um, how to get you out there as a what we would consider as an expert or the authority figure in what it is that you do. And we know that the market of entrepreneurship in different categories is so saturated. So we're talking about from uh, people who do t-shirts, uh, people who does skincare, hair oils, um, um coaching programs, all of that, the industry is saturated and you need to know how to separate yourself different from other people. Everybody is not big on social media expression, but we all know that social media is important, very important for when you do have any type of product or services that you're trying to get to the masses of people. I see it for myself. I'm horrible when it comes to being on social media because I'm really not a social media person, um, but it is necessary. Okay. It is necessary. So we're going to get into it today. If you, this is the first time that you've ever been on my YouTube channel. Um, my name is Christina L. Turner key maker. And I am an entrepreneur just like you. I've been in the entrepreneurship for 30 years. I am also a author of, of written works uh, where I've written things about finances, taxes. I have journals out there um, so that you can peruse through on Amazon. Uh, the link will be shared with you. And so that's who I am. Um, I am very uh, I was I was with a group of people today. We were talking about um, being introverted and extroverted. I am introvert, extrovert. I am extroverted when need to be, but most of the times I'm pretty quiet and low key. So, but again, going into our topic of being having brand exposure versus marketing, there is a difference, and I just want to to share this little bit of information and hopefully this will help you on your journey as a entrepreneur. Okay. So when you have um, brand exposure, what that does, it helps repeat purchases of your services or your products. And it also helps you to get, um, to gain new revenue. All right. So we're talking about brand exposure. That's what it does. Okay. And you, the, 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 the crust of, or what I should say that the bat, the baseline of inter entrepreneurship is to, of course, to make money. You want to provide a service or a product for uh, those you're trying to sell or to serve, and you want to make money. So having brand exposure encourages you to have repeated purchases so that you can generate new revenue. When customers trust a company and they feel like they know a lot about them, they will be more likely to make repeat purchases, okay? So it is imperative that you put your product out there. You put the, not so much the product, but also about your company, what your company do, what does it represent? That has to do with branding. So when they hear Christina L. Turner King maker, people should be affiliated with my name, knowing that, Hey, she's been in business for 30 plus years. And she is a consultant, a business consultant to entrepreneurs 
uh, in their first to three years of business. Okay. So that's what I do. So when, if I put anything out there to, um, if I send them, send in an email to some past customers, they already know what it is that I do, but we're talking about getting it out there to the masses, to more people other than your core network. Cause sometimes we get really, really comfortable. And I'm saying this even for myself, you get so comfortable within the sphere of influence that is around you that you don't launch out into the deep. Okay. So loyalty is vital to a business's success. And if there's no brand awareness, there can't be any loyalty. Okay. So I'm going to say this to you again, you want loyalty. Okay. Cause loyalty is vital to your business making revenue. If you don't have loyal clients and people are so fickle and things are turning over so fast, you have to do keep up to what's going on, keep up to what's happening with the trends, but you want loyal, loyal customers. Okay. And so that you can continue to have a turnover. So here are two main goals that you want to achieve with marketing okay you want brand exposure exposure and then you want actual marketing so here is the difference marketing versus brand awareness is actively working to get sales or to convert your leads so i don't know if any of you have ever been on um if you have a facebook business page right or even instagram business page um that they would um when you're trying to promote your post and they ask you you know are you trying to get more people to come to your website are you trying to get um people to message you that has to do with getting sales and to convert those leads into people to purchase your services or your products so why is brand exposure is important it you have to keep your brand at the forefront of of everything. Okay. And like I said, we're so inundated with so much information. And then not only that, the time, the time is changing so fast. I mean, you could be working on something at start at eight 30 in the morning. And before you know it, it's one o'clock in the afternoon. And it feels like you only been working for two hours. So you have to um, keep it going. It's, it's like we're at moving at a fast pace here. And so one of the things to do to keep you on track is to make sure that you have goals and objectives when it comes to brand awareness and to um, marketing. So you want to cast a wide net Okay, um, to start funneling in customers. And what do I mean by that? Casting a wide net. So let's say, for instance, um, I'm going to go back to the Facebook ads. When you're doing a Facebook ad and uh, they talk about like the characteristics of the people that you're trying to attract. So let's say that you are in trucking, right? So Facebook has it where that you can put people who are interested in cell phones, uh, people who are interested in traveling or shopping online, because we know that when you're thinking of it, that trucking is the trucking industry move merchandise right so when you're trying to build your brand awareness and you're doing these ads you want to put in some of these characteristics so you want to build your brand awareness so you need to do it for two different groups one business to business and then business to customers okay so you want to you want to be able to integrate business to business for them to participate with the services that you offer and the products that you offer. And then also business to customer for the services that you offer and the products that you offer. So you want to have those. Now, how brand exposure is going to help your business? One is going to create increase your market share and your sales. Okay. It's going to be able to scale your content across all different channels. So whether you're using Instagram, TikTok, um, Facebook, Twitter, 
uh, Snapchat, all of these different platforms. And I know that it can be really, really overwhelming because it gets overwhelming for me, which is sometimes if you can afford it, okay, then you hire someone that's able to do that. Or you want to use a couple of the apps that they have out there where you can, Mm -hmm. uh, where they are all integrated, where you can post on one platform and then it will go to the other platform. Like for instance, if I post on Instagram, it'll go to my, to my um, Facebook. If I post on TikTok, it can go to my Instagram. So you want to have that. So you're able to post one time. Um, So, So you want to be able to scale your contest across all different types of channels for that in order to get more leads. Now, you want to be also able to improve your brand perception. So because sometimes people don't know what it is you actually do. I had that problem because of me being an entrepreneur and a diverse, um, diverse um, community of businesses that it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly what it is that I do, right? So I just don't consult, but I have other businesses as well. So when you have something like that, you want to know what is the main thing that you want to see, that you want people to see you as doing, as being the authority figure of, okay? As being the expert of. So for me, if I'm trying to get clients, and I'm not talking about the products and all that stuff, you know, like with the t-shirts and all that, but if I'm a client-based business, I want people to see me as a consultant. I do. I want people to see me as a consultant. And it literally took time because it's not one particular thing that I do. And sometimes that can be very challenging when you have multiple um, businesses or you do multiple things. You need to hold, hone in on one particular thing and in the midst of it, integrate everything else but the primary is the primary and the secondary will stay the secondary if you understand what I what I mean so like say I'm gonna give you another example me as a business consultant when I sit down talk to my clients about their businesses and um, when they are looking at my resume or on my website they see all the different other things that I do or that I have if it's on the website if it's going to be on the website, which is what we're working on right now, because Christina L. Turner um, Enterprises Incorporated is a holding company to all the other companies that I have and that I do. But my primary thing is to help entrepreneurs like you to become successful. So while I do these YouTubes or uh, these TikToks or Facebook um, videos, It is to bring information, but I do want to be looked at as a consultant. Me being a published author, that's just a fragment of it. Me being a speaker, it's just a fragment of it. So you want to improve your brand perception and people will know exactly what it is that you do. Also, you want to build audience data. So who are the primary people that look at your videos? You have to go in and see the analytics on Facebook. You have to look, if you're posting on Facebook, if you're posting on TikTok, are there men, women, what are they age group? Who is your targeted audience? And you want to build that audience um, because they are your primary people. So you kind of like want to lean into it. So if if I attract more people that in the age of 2025, I'm definitely going to um, present my brand to them that Think like a 20, 20, 25 year old versus someone like me. That's a generation X because, you know, we're, we're already there. We've already been there or we're on our way there. We have a different thinking, different mindset, and there's different things that attract us versus someone that is a millennial versus someone that's a boomer, a baby boomer. Okay, so build your audience data, know what it is that your audience, what they're doing, what they're looking at, how long are they staying in your video. You also can uh, build brand awareness uh, by transforming your marketing strategy so that you can drive more conversions, you can create more opportunities. And what that does is driving more conversions on, let's say, for instance, that you put a 
Um, maybe you might do a, um, a poll or you may want to do a message me where they can ask you questions. Uh, one of the things I always say is you, if you need any help, let me know. You can reach me at info at Christina L. Turner.com. So you want to try, try to, tr- uh, do a different type of marketing strategy to, to drive more conversions, to create more opportunities for you to get in contact or for you to connect with prospective clients, okay, whether it's for services or for products. So um, your um, your analytics on the back is going to let you know in the back end of your of your platform will let you know who is watching you and then you can tweak. And don't forget now that we have this miraculous tool, AI, okay? Um, AI can also help you to uh, do brand awareness that will be geared specifically towards the people who are following you the most because the people who follow you the most, those are your uh, your money makers. Those are your, uh, your business to come customers or your business to business, those are your clients. And you want to make sure that you keep them intrigued, that uh, you keep them coming back for more. So find out how to make sure that when you put your information into the AI, like chat GPT, that you're very specific. And one of the things I would say is, let's say that my group is 25 year olds, 20 to 25 year olds, and those are, and they're female. I would do something like this. Hey, chat GPT, uh, create for me a um, marketing strategy and for uh, women in the age group of 20 to 25 years old so that it can be co- so that they are able to purchase my services or my products something like that on a line so you have to be a little bit more specific when you are using AI so you're not thinking so hard because sometimes we get so caught up in trying to um, put the words together correctly and chat GPT is uh, flexible but like I said you have to give it uh, a little bit more directives you have to be a little bit have a little bit more direction so that it'll know what to do and the possibility this is another thing that that you do as well when you are using chat gpt which is you know which is what we're talking about here building brand awareness when you are being specific make sure that you tell chat gpt that if they're going to give you something that it has not been used before okay because What you do is, it's individualized, okay? Just because we're all baking cookies does not mean that my cookies and your cookies are the same cookies, if you get my drift. So let's talk about here content marketing. So let's say this, consumers are much more likely to purchase from a brand that they feel that they know and trust, which is why it's good to do contact marketing and you have to be good at it which we talked about before using chat gpt can help you with that so let's say that every piece of branded uh, content that a consumer see, sees it makes them more familiar about your brand and what what you do as a business okay so Everything that you do, like with me being a consultant, it will behoove me, right, to put out more information on it regarding business to entrepreneurs who need this good information, all right, so they can see me as the authority figure as a business consultant. It doesn't matter if, you, if you've been in business um five years or 10 or 15 years, it is the information that you put out there so that people can be familiar, more familiar with your brand. Okay. So branded content helps you get exposed in these different ways. So it's going to show your knowledge and expertise, which we talked about you being an authority figure, which builds trust with your audience. More content is going to equal more exposure, 
more exposure exposure is going to equal more that you can get a vast amount of audience to what it is that you do or what it is that you're selling. And then also it's going to express your brand voice and strengthen your commitment to the values of how you represent your company, to the values of what it is that you're presenting, because you also have to show value and what it is that you're presenting. You have to show value in your services. You have to show value in your product. You have to be, I talked about in uh, one of my videos about um, when students are applying for scholarships and they have to have passion for that, right? People want to know that you have passion. They want to they want to feel your passion, okay? Um, and so when you are creating branded content, people need to feel you. They need to understand and have a knowledge base on hey, she really likes what she's doing. She really enjoys that. I like how she's presenting that, okay? Um, and that that will help you. So now the next thing that you want to do, you want to establish your brand's authority, which we've been talking about, and your expertise, your level of expertise. So your content doesn't necessarily have to mention your product or even, you don't even have to do a sales pitch, okay? You don't have to do that. You don't have to mention a product. You don't have to mention your sales pitch, but you can be highly effective without having to do that, okay? So, and I'm going to tell you how, how you can do that. So, again, you do not have to mention your product, and you do not have to do a sales pitch in order to be highly effective for brand awareness. So, while your audience may not immediately be ready to purchase your stuff or purchase your, your services um, with everything that they read, they will begin to associate your brand as an expert in the field that you are presenting. So let's say, for instance, um, I would use like, um, we see a lot of the um, turmeric soap, right? So people may not be interested in buying the first time they see it, but if it's continuous and, and then if it's continuous in their face, right? You see this turmeric soap? It's telling you how it eliminates blemishes, how it makes your skin feel good, all of that stuff. You may not even be that interested in it, but if it keeps getting into your psyche, right? You keep seeing it. And they say that you need to see something 27 times in order for it to build interest. So I don't know how many times on TikTok, have you seen that turmeric soap? And I'm sure hundreds of thousands of you have bought that soap. But in the beginning, you didn't. You did not do that, okay? But whoever's doing that turmeric soap, it's making it seem like they are an expert in their field, lightening up hyperpigmentation, okay? So quality content builds trust. You just don't want to put anything out there. I know, like, everybody's dancing. I'm not a dancer. I'm not going to be dancing. I mean, I do dance, but I'm not going to be dancing with my content. This is where I feel like I am an authority figure when I'm talking because I am a teacher, okay? I love to teach and they do explanations and to make you feel comfortable. That's what I love to do. So, but the more that I do it, my audience and your audience will more likely begin to trust me and you as an, as an expert, right? So you're, if you're out there and the audience starts knowing more about your brand, then you're more likely to be trusted. And I know that's weird. So trust is really a very important factor in anything that we do. Trust is like the foundation of everything. So you trust, let's say you go to a supermarket at Kroger's, you know, Kroger is going to have the best, whatever. Okay. And whatever it is you're trying to purchase, let's say the best, uh, turkey ham. All right. And Kroger slices their ham. Perfect. And H-E-B doesn't, or tops doesn't, or, um, whole foods doesn't, but Kroger does it just right. OK, and because you trust how they slice your ham and how it's always fresh, you're going to always go to Kroger and you may go and venture out and check 
uh, Costco's or you may go and venture out and check um, some other type of supermarket for that turkey ham and try and you like, yeah, that was good. It was nice. But Kroger is number one on that, right? So trust is an important factor in order to get people to become um, purchasers, to purchase your services or your products. They have to trust you, okay? So the next thing we're going to talk about is how to develop your brand personality. So the content you publish should always reflect your brand values and your mission. Okay, I'm going to say this again. Any content that you publish should always reflect your brand values and your mission. You need to know what that is. Your tone also will depend on your audience and the market that you're in and how you're trying to position your brand. So what is the tone? The inflection of your voice, okay? The excitement, the passion. You want to make sure that um, your tone and how you're presenting yourself. Me, I'm always in professional, business casual. I always have this type of tone. I try to um, be engaging. When I'm talking, I do sound like a professor or a teacher because that's what I do. When I am uh, doing business coaching or consulting, I like to use the word as a consultant. When I'm doing that, I am literally teaching. The same tone that I'm giving you here on YouTube videos is the same tone that I'm giving when you're sitting in front of me and I want you to have clear directives and actionable goals, okay? And so with that, this is my brand. And now this is something that you need to also know is that you're not gonna be for everybody. You're not gonna be for everybody. Everybody has a nation, a tribe that will will be gravitated to them. So you can't, um, feel, um, I always tell my clients this, if you're not feeling at the top of your game, don't touch anything that is regarding your business because your business is going to take the brunt of how you feel. Okay. So your tone is very, very important. So it's very critical that you do these things. One, clearly define your brand Two, establish your mission Three, provide value. Four, develop a consistent voice, which we talked about how I talk. And then also a voice on my presentation. Your presentation is also your voice. And then for the last one, uh, specify a content strategy that pulls everything together. So you have to develop a strategy. One of the things that I look at, um, I look at other people. I watch other people. I am a watcher of social media. I like watching. I like people's stories. I love their content. Um, uh, One of the uh, content people that's creating content that I love watching is April. I love hers. I love um, Shannon Sharp with the Shay Shay. I love his content. And even though he has derivatives of different things that he does with that, it is chef's kiss. Right. So you there is you could tell that there is a strategy that pulls everything that they are doing together. It's not all over the place. Okay, so if you don't develop your content with your brand personality on full display, it could result in a weakened brand. Okay, which will make awareness even more difficult. So how do you do this? So you have to develop a brand personality. My brand personality is consultant. I talk like a consultant. When I'm talking to people on the phone, it's like this. Even when I'm in a room of other CEOs and other meetings, I am like this. I do crack jokes because I I can be funny at times as well. But this is basically my tone. This is, this is me. This is who I am. Um, And I don't want to, um, I want my full personality to be on display as well as you need to have your full personality on display because, and you need to show up all the time. So listen, my grandmother used to say, if you start something, you're going to need to continue to do that. All right. So don't try to adopt all these other different things on how people are getting clients. So you got people who are dancing in videos and dot, 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 dot. Um, 
if that's not you, don't do it. Because guess what? You are creating a brand. And if that's not your, your, your personality, it will start confusing people. All right, because now you're doing da, 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 da. now you're doing the Dougie, then you're doing then you're 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 being your regular uh now use uh, Cardi B's uh explanation, regular self. And you should always be your regular, regular self. You should always be your authentic self and who you are because when you are presenting your brand, if you are your authentic self, then people get to know who you are as an individual and then they can trust you. Okay. And if they begin to trust you, then they'll be more eager to buy what it is that you're selling. So let's talk about expanding your audience. When a person shares your content, they are effectively giving it a vote of confidence. So if you hear me on my videos, go, hey, like and share my video. Send it to somebody else who may, who may benefit from the information I just gave you. You definitely want to be able to have your videos out there that people will share, that they will like, that they'll be like, go watch her videos or go watch his video. This is awesome. This is amazing. You want to be able to, to have that. And it gives them confidence when they're sharing your stuff on their, on their page, on their TikTok, on their Facebook, on their Twitter. It builds confidence not only for you, but it also builds confidence for the people that you don't see start having confidence in you. Okay. So let's talk real briefly about building your customer loyalty, because remember we mentioned that in the beginning. So by how do you build it is you need to be consistent publishing new content. I know I don't like it either. I don't like it either because it can be, and it is time consuming, but you know, the adage is money is time and time is money, right? So people used to say that in a negative con connotation, but I want you to flip it to a positive, uh, in a positive way. Okay. You have the positive mindset of it. Money is time and time is money. So if you want the money, you're going to have to put the time in to get the money that you need. And one is consistency. Consistency would be everything because consistency equals discipline. You, you, you have to, it, when someone says you need to be consistent on doing something, it's discipline. You, if, if you're trying to lose weight, you have to be disciplined. I don't care what the baseline is. You may not even start off working out three times a week, but you can start off like not eating sugar, passing up on that cookies and that cake. Having discipline and being consistent brings results. So you want to keep in touch with your existing customers. I felt miserably doing that. Send them emails. You don't have to send them an email every freaking week. You don't have to, hey, I'm just dropping in, seeing how you're doing. How's everything going? Give them a personal call because these were your clients before, right? So why not call them and say, hey, I'm just checking on you. See how you going? How, how's everything going in your life? All right. You want people to know that you care about them because they'll be like, you know what? Guess who called me? Yeah, I was a client of hers or his and she's called to check up on me. So let me tell you something. You will be in the forefront of their mind. Right. You'll be in the forefront of their mind where they will end up telling somebody. And if someone asks, hey, do you know where I can? Do you know who? And then what happens is they'll easily come, you will come to their mind and they will easily come to you and bringing you customers. Do you understand? They'll easily come to you and say, hey, um, I want to give your number or your information out to such and such. A, is that okay? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely fine that you can do that. One, and the, that was one of the things. So you want to keep in touch with your existing customers. Number two, you want to give them the opportunity to share your content and product with others. Don't put it on private. I don't know how many people have their accounts on private. Are you selling your product and services or what? So if you make an account and like, I know Facebook, you have to have a private Facebook page in order to do business accounts, right? Um but you need not to have your stuff 
where people can't share. You want it to be the whole world, that little world, that little globe on there. You want to be able for people to share all of your content. And then number three is keep your brand at the forefront of their minds. Maybe once or twice a month, you send an email or maybe once you give them a call every quarter, every the people who used to be with you and um, they may have brought a, a product from you. If they brought a product for you, maybe send them out a coupon. Hey, we haven't heard from you in a long time. We have a new product in. Here's a coupon to try our new product or send them a sample. Hey, we were like, we've got a new product and we would like to send you a sample of our product. Is it okay that we can send you that? You want to keep your brand in the forefront of their mind. So another one too, that a lot of people are doing is partner up with influencers. Who are the influencers? So you have these type of influence. You have mega influencers, you have macro influencers, micro and nano influencers. A mega influencer has 1 million plus followers. A macro influencers has a hundred thousand to a million followers. The thing you want to pay attention to is engagement rates, not followers. Who is engaging? Micro influencers have 10,000 to 100,000 followers. And it, it would be um, less an investment on your part um, because the payout is totally different from a mega to a macro to a nano on how much if they're going to be promoting your brand on how much it's going to cost you. Okay. Nano is a 10,000 followers or less. So you might be wondering how to choose the right influencer for your brand awareness campaign. Here's a quick guide. Okay, so with a mega influencer, if you have no budget limitations and you want to increase the exposure and awareness of your brand and products, you're going to use a mega influencer. For a, micro, a macro influencer, if you want to target a certain audience or reach a larger, um, a larger mac, uh, market, then you are going to use a macro influencer. For a micro influencer, if your goals are to increase conversions and generate leads, so this is good for those that are um, having coaching programs or how to fix their credit or even how to build a business. So you want to generate leads for a specific audience, you're going to use a micro influencer. For a nano influencer, which may be something that you might want to consider first when building and if you have a tighter budget, this is for local businesses and brands. So brand representative, uh, representatives, you're going to need product reviews, sponsored posts. So we talked about um, paying for uh, posts with Facebook and how they have you to categorize where's your targeted audience and do they use cell phones? Do they do gaming? So you want to have sponsored posts as well. So another thing too is for your, for your business that you can do for services or products, you can do a, uh, to start an affiliation program. And I just want to say this as a sidebar that if you are still watching here, um, on Christina L. Turner, um, Kingmaker on brand, on business talk and you're still watching I'm asking you to subscribe right now and also share this video that's going to help someone else so let's go back to starting an affiliate uh, program what is affiliate marketing okay so a lot of people don't know they just think that you're going to go into affiliate and you're going to put their link onto your website and that's it no an affiliate has an invested interest in getting their audience to click on the link for your product. So using affiliate marketing for brand awareness, anyone can be affiliate. So let's say, for instance, if we offer affiliate marketing for Cela Reese Beauty, that means our information will go onto that person's website. And every time that someone clicks, they and and then and purchase the person who has the, the affiliate link is able to, to get revenue from that. So by creating affiliate channel, you'll be engaging with bloggers, 
influencers, and content creators within your niche. So be sure, um, be very, very sure to choose affiliates that are, are within your niche. Do not choose affiliates like I would not put someone who's doing bugs, that's their niche, and have them to be over my skincare line. That's not my niche, okay? Um, collaborate with other brands. That's number five for branding. So you are able to work together with other companies that's similar to yours. Yes, I don't know why people are so intimidated with um, collaborating with in industries that are similar to yours. So if you're doing skincare, you want to cut, do some collaborations with other people who are doing skincare. If you are publishing, you are a publisher, you want to collaborate with other people who are publishing, doing published works, okay? Um, so by working together with companies similar to yours, you can promote your brand, you minimize costs, and you also increase sales. So how do you find brands to team up with? Um, and also ways to collaborate. One of the ways to do that is doing contests and giveaways. You can do product shoots. You can do events and parties. Um, but I also want you to understand too, when doing this, you want to manage your expectations. So increasing exposure with guest posts. Now, one of the things I had said in my video um, the other day was that we're going to be bringing on guests. So not only to talk about business, because this is business talk with Christina O'Turner Keymaker, but also talk about interpersonal um, things that are related to how your business can be affected. So you want to do a guest post. Also, you want to uh, do um, or find a blog that the guests that you're going to have on your, your show or even to post their information, you want to find that and then link it, link that link to their posts, to their, um, their works on your media. So you see how people do the videos, right? Um, how they share their videos of other people on their timeline. That's what it should do. So the post should always solve a problem for their audience and be relevant to your audience at the same time. So if I was a comedian, I'm going to put things on there that is a representation of being a comic. Okay. Some blogs will also have information on their websites about how to submit a guest post. So you can submit a post on, on their thing as well. And you definitely want to check in with them first to see if they allow it. And then you can post on their website or their blog posts, okay? If not, you'll need to send an email to them pitching your idea. So always ask first. So remember, this is a symbiotic um, relationship. And if they're getting increased engagement from your post as well. So that means that let's say, for instance, you put, post something on their stuff. Um, that's relatable to what you both are doing and it becomes a win-win situation for you both. How does this increase awareness? Okay, you may be asking. One is that um, it increased awareness because specifically, let's say for instance, you're doing a collaboration with Pose with someone who has 10K followers and they see your stuff automatically especially if it's really, really good and it's engaging. I've done it before. I've went and found who the person that posts on there and clicked their profile and looked at their stuff and then started liking their video, started liking their content. This is how it's going to increase awareness. So I hope that this segment today really, really help you in um, the difference between um, uh, marketing and brand awareness. I'm hoping that this, this is some really, really good information and that you can use this for future reference because this is pretty consistent. OK, to get brand exposure. So thank you so much for being a part of Business Talk with Christina L. Turner, King Maker. I hope that you will subscribe so that you know when I'm coming on again. And also, too, that you like and share. 
All right. If you need any help in regard to any of the things I talked about today, you can always email me at info at Christina L. Turner.com. You could just put help and just stay to with this. I do answer my emails. I do. I answer them. And then we set up an appointment with you. And then we can go from there because there's course paperwork that needs to be filled out before we can help you or anything like that. And then we go from there. So I hope you enjoy this segment on the six different ways to increase brand exposure. And I wish that you would prosper in being good health, even as your soul prosper. God bless.